um, so I think time and again we have been discussing this topic but this topic is very important and calling is not just about making a call we call every we call maybe make maybe 10 20 calls every single day to random people like and to family and friends and this and that but these calls that we're supposed to make again as i said the other day as well when a few of you were sitting what's important is your attitude your confidence the knowledge you have when you're making that call and your intention why are you calling and for that you need to be prepared whether you're calling to acquire a listing whether you're calling to pitch a project or whether you are following up with a client either way you need to set your intention straight like this is what i am calling for this is my target if i am calling to acquire a listing and it's my first call my target should be to create repo with a client right to have that a bit of a long conversation or what however long i can make like of course it's up to the other person how much time the other person will give me but my first 30, 40, 50 seconds of the call will, uh, you know, will uh, define whether, you know, we are, this other person is going to speak to me and we'll, we can have a three, four, five minutes call on an average. That's also good if that's your average time for your first call to anybody that you're speaking for the, you know, first time. But then again, your intention has to be right. What you're going to ask him, you should be prepared. What kind of introduction you're going to give of yourself and what uh, questions are you going to ask because when we are when we are calling on certain numbers we do have information provided like this is the name of the person this is the mobile number do some effort try to google see who this person is if you want to make more effort this is how we generally call leads if somebody calls us for a property or calls us for um, from a listing or maybe a social media lead that we receive we try to Google and try to understand who this person is before initiating the call. That's even the second step of, you know, doing that. But if you want to do that, if you are prepared and if you want to get some results out of this call, you will do that. So in case you are, so what do we initiate calls for? For listings, for pitching new projects, and reverting to leads and a lot of this portion which is, which is mostly neglected is, a, is our follow-ups anyways so we have these different kind of calls that we keep on making but before you initiate any of these calls the most important thing is your attitude your intention for the call your confidence and that is all going to show how with with your voice quality with your pitch and of course the information and this attitude also becomes your confidence when you have the right kind of knowledge you're not going to say ah ooh, mm, on the call right if you are initiating a call, you are confident, you will not, you know, you will not be hesitant, you will not be reluctant to ask a question or, and especially the most, so to prepare yourself for all of this, that you are on top of the call when you call and you overpower your client or I would say that it's, it's, a, it's a transaction even on a call, you know, this other person is going to listen to you if you have that authority, that confidence, that knowledge. Otherwise, no, they will not bother who, who they are speaking to. So the most important thing that I have been telling you all is to create your introduction. That's your 30 to 40 seconds. The first 30 to 40 seconds of the call are going to define your repo with a client moving onwards. If I'm going to make a call and I'll say, uh, um, hi, this is Farba. I'm calling if you have properties for rent or for sale. I don't think so the other person will bother much, right? Or if I'll say, hi, this is Farwa. How are you? Good afternoon. How are you? What do you think? What's the likely answer, uh, Alian, to this? If I'll say, hi, uh, good afternoon. This is Farwa. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm busy. 
Yes. If I'm going to ask a question on a call in the first 30 to 50 seconds, the answer is going to be no. Why? Because we are invading somebody's personal personal space. We are invading their privacy. We are just calling them without any, um, it's a random call. It's a, you know, they have all the right to say no. A lot of people will do. Until or unless you say something of interest, until or unless your voice has something, some magic in it, you have some authority in your voice, you have some confidence in your voice, you have that attitude that you're calling with a purpose. Nobody's interested to waste time. And you shouldn't as well. So if I'm going to just make a call and say, Hi, uh, I'm, this is Farva, I'm calling you from ABC Properties. And I was just looking that if you have properties for rent or for sale. This is the average line that 99% of the brokers say in a call. I receive like 20 calls a day. Mansurbhai, you must be receiving. Everybody receives call. If you sell one property, you will receive 20 calls every day. Because your number goes into the database. And this is what... It, it, no, nobody's going to, and it's something very, very basic. <clears throat> and despite what you are saying, also your voice. If somebody's coming from the, you know, they're still sleeping. Hi, good morning, you know. When you settle down and become comfortable, and then, you know, have a seat to sit on, and just doing it in a very relaxed mode, what kind of voice will come out? What kind of voice do you think will come out? Yeah, Farah, when you make calls while you're sitting and you're eating your fruits. Sleepy voice. Huh? Sleepy voice. Sleepy voice I think I, I, I would never call if I'm sitting. I'll dial a number, I will pick up the phone and I'll walk. Because when I'm walking, I have, I'm active. I have my attitude. I'm again telling you guys, you don't know, but everything reflects. And when the other person cannot see you, they can only hear you. So it's all about your voice. Whatever you're saying is going to make sense to the other person only if it comes with some kind of authority. If it comes with some kind of confidence. And purpose. Your intention for the call has to be set straight. I was listening to this other call. I think this video was on TikTok the other day. Where this guy gets a call and he says, uh, Hi, uh, I'm calling you for this project. And he says, okay, I, he didn't listen to anything. This guy says, okay, yes, I will buy. What now? This guy say, uh, you're going to buy? He's like, yeah. And he disconnected the call. Because he didn't know what to say next. Because he wasn't expecting somebody to say yes to his call. You get my point? So you should know when you are initiating the call, what is your intention? Are you calling for a listing? Then if the client says, yes, I have this property, what is the price? You should know what is the price. If he says, this is the price, and he's asking a higher price from the market, you should have the argument to counter his uh, his uh, this thing. That the price is not this, the price is this because of this, this and this. And you have the information, what unit number he has, what is the property number. If you are an area specialist or a building specialist, you would know what is the view of this property, what is the layout like, what are the sizes like and why a 01 series is better than a 02 series. What is the difference in size and price and view? This is what you should know and the other person cannot say anything to you. That's how you take control in that conversation. So, when you set this intention right, what is clean, clean? When you set this, what we have to do is to set the intention right and know everything that is going to go in that call. If the client says yes, what you do? If the client says no, what do you do? If the client says I want to sell, what's the price? You should know what is the price. If he gives you an overpriced unit, you should know how to say how to counter that argument if he gives you a market price unit this also happens a lot people give them give we will give inventory which is market on market price and the brokers they their their answers are like hopeless when you get a price if i get a price which is just market price or slightly higher also i'm very excited because i know that i have the information the capacity the knowledge and the confidence to bring the seller to the price I want to bring him to. If it is like way higher than he's asking three, four, five million above the market price, of course, that's a different thing. But if somebody is asking 300, 400, 500,000 above the market price, or even a million, then it's not a big difference in price, right? Then you have to educate the seller or the landlord for whatever property they're giving for rent or for sale. Slowly, 
so that he corrects the price and come on if he's keen to sell so if you get a price on mark if you get a unit on a market price what are you going to what, what are you going to say what argument do you have how are you going to list okay if the client says okay just list my property so what are you going to say how do you list the property what documents are required what is the process how are you going to explain it to the client if the client says no i don't want to give you a listing it's just an inventory keep it in your mind and if you want to work on it just work on it otherwise because i have listed it with three other brokers so what is your answer going to be in this case i want to know i want to know how prepared are you when you are initiating this call because only then you will have some kind of result if you are not prepared you will fumble at any of these stages and the call's result will be zero then if the client says and of course the client is not just going to ask about what kind of what are the three things that you can engage the client with what are the three kind of information that you should have readily available of course your product information product information is the building that you are calling on the information of that particular tower or that community or whatever like what are amenities what are the number of units what is the specification of the building what is the view from that building what are the type of apartments available in the building what is the rent price what is the sale price that's called your product information you should have that then you should have the process information as well like if the seller says uh i bought it from so and so person but now i want to sell this property and what you what do you think i should do you should know how to handle that question very basic but people also give stupid answers to this question and if the client says i want to rent it you should know what is the rental process if the client says oh i want to gift this property to my uh, daughter let's suppose or my son you should know what is the process to gift a property if this is that you know this is the market price that i have bought it for but this is the price i am looking for can i get this price how can you have how can you counter that information if you have the market knowledge you can tell the seller that sir dubai has gone through this this and this cycle and we have seen this price this price it went up so much it went down so much it fluctuated like this in this particular tower if you have studied this pro product like when it was launched what is the highest price it touched when it went down what were the pricing like sir this is the minimum and maximum we can get right now if you want to retain and make more re rental return the price let's say you can say the price is saturated now it will not increase so much more until or unless the market will take a big uh, it goes up you know and unrealistically so better to rent for you so that you can get your rental returns and eventually your property gets on break even and your money is you know out otherwise market is very good right so suppose right now the market is in a hype so if i speak to a seller i tell them that there have been two cycles in the market we are in the third cycle right now and right now still the market is slightly going up and the market is good it's bullish if you want to sell you will get best prices so these are the things that you can tell the client only when you have this which is the market knowledge so all of this information you cannot have in one go what can you do as a new broker you can cram if you want to if you can first of all you should understand i would say that's the easiest way to do it but if you think understanding is difficult or not cram this information i don't care you should know everything about what tower you are choosing for example you are choosing jewels right you should know everything like who is the builder when was it launched where is the plot um what was the payment plan when it was launched when is the handover is it delayed is the handover coming on time or not what type of apartments are available in the building what is the specification it is ground plus 30 plus 20 whatever whatever is the specification what are the different layouts how many floor plates are there how many number of floors are there what are the amenities how many amenities are there what kind of amenities why this building and then of course when you know everything about the building you should know what is around that building what else is available in that community overall what is the competition of this building so that if somebody comes in and tells me that this building is giving me this rent and you should have the information that this building doesn't have these amenities and this building has or this one has this payment plan and that building doesn't have that 
that is how you build up the conversation when you're speaking to the client and i am telling this time and again to you guys that the client is interested in his property like if somebody comes to you what is the best way to initiate a conversation with someone alian what do you think is the best way let's say randomly as well forget about real estate when you go to someone and you want to initiate a conversation and you want to hold a conversation what do you think you're going to talk about Yes, ask them about them. Speak of something which will interest them. Something that they would like to talk about. That's how you make the other person speak to you, right? So if I'm just going to call and just talk about, you know, myself, it's not going to work. Nobody's bothered. No, they don't care. If I work for one year or 10 years or 12 years, they don't care. The other person doesn't see me on the call. They will not bother. I'm just another person calling them. So... my trick would be to say something to create that interest from the other side if the client says like we had this very long discussion the other day in one of the trainings where we discussed the situation that if i'm calling someone and the other person says that you know what i am living in the property and i don't want to sell and why should i sell then what can i say to this client to have interest i again i have told you guys good trick is to talk about the talk about them talk about their property that you've bought a very good unit it's a corner unit it has a full view of the park and in any point of time if you want to sell it please tell me because right now the market is also very good this price has appreciated from here to here so if you have bought at 500000 now the market price is 700000 you can have a capital gain and maybe move out of this one bedroom and go to a two bedroom so this is how you're going to initiate in this is you know it's it's basically it's common sense If somebody comes to me for example I took a property mortgage another mortgage advisor comes and tells me that you can get an equity release this person didn't tell me that this person is giving me this idea I will think about it why because it's my own benefit it's something of interest to me and my property and somebody is trying to give me an idea a creative idea about doing something about it just like that another uh, in every case the clients whether they want to sell or they don't want to sell whether they are renting or they are not renting they will always be interested to make more money because they are investors so if you have an idea where you can you know create that opportunity from that property and i'm telling you people have people when they make calls and give ideas if you know all of that they uh, they you can uh, sell a property from a seller who definitely doesn't want to sell as well they change their mind they will sell if they see that there is some profit coming in and also you'll explain them sir this is the cycle of the market right now we are here we are going to do in a correct we will be in a correction in a one or years or two years time or so at that time the price will again saturate so if you feel that you want to flip it's a good time to flip flip it make some money get a better product move into that or flip it and then wait for a year and then when the prices come down buy a better property this is how you create interest in the client's mind So having said that what i feel is that i haven't seen good morning please have a seat attitude aisa hi hota hai ke if uh, i am i'm going to speak to somebody i am not going to see understand this yes it is positive attitude it's not negative attitude of course it, but you have to i'm not talking i'm not asking you guys to become aggressive okay. you please I am not talking about that. I am saying there is a bit of a dif- difference between being no being aggressive and being assertive. What's the difference? Who can tell me? Harsh. Yeah. What's what do you think is the difference between being assertive and what does assertive means and what does aggressive means? Or no, I'm not saying what message you are sending. I'm saying what does it means? What does being aggressive in a conversation means, and what does being assertive in a conversation means? Want to jump on somebody's head and want to get something out of uh, that. pushy, the pushy attitude. We don't want the pushy attitude. We want the classy attitude. But we will tell them that we mean business. We are going to work on our purpose, like. I don't have extra time you don't have extra time we are here to do business and that business can come from 
the benefit of the client, obviously, right? Because I'm making a call, I'm initiating a call. So that is important. What is assertive? What is being assertive, Mansoor? Assertive is when you push. Can somebody Google the, the, the exact? Like showing some confidence. Show it also Has somebody Googled assertive? Yes, what does it mean, Dania? Tell me the exact. And showing a confident. You know why there is a very uh, a small difference between being aggressive and assertive? Alain, what do you think? Aggressive is more, more uh, pushing the customer into a corner. Mm. Assertive is where you show them the can go into. Assertive has boundaries. Being aggressive doesn't have that. Being aggressive is also being personal. Being assertive is being professional. So when you are assertive, you are enforcing your idea in a positive way, saying that this is the market situation. These are the prices ongoing. And we are sitting on this cycle of the market. My professional advice would, for you would be to sell the property, looking at these facts and figures. However, if you want to retain the property, these are the gains you can get and these are the losses you might. Give them the full picture. And enforce on what you want to say more, what you are you know, uh, suggesting out of the two options. Give them the two options and then enforce the options that you want to with facts and figures, not with authority uh, of voice or authority of that. There's a fine line between that. You're just going to explain to them with logic and facts and figures. It's a, this is the situation and this is a, So being assertive is good because in our position, we have to be. We are advisors in real estate. They are going to listen to you. When you go to a doctor, you don't tell the doctor what to, what to do, right? The doctor tell you why because the doctor is a specialist of medical sciences, right? They have read and studied and so are we doing. We are studying the cycle of the market. We are studying the uh, products. We are studying the comparisons. We are doing transactions. We know in and out like what kind of situations can happen, what has happened in the past. We see, we've seen the history and all. So you should have that confidence. And I know when you are new, it is a little difficult to grasp on because you have not seen all of that. But being in real estate, the good thing is that when you are in a team, and you have people who have worked for several years and that please gain on that information. Make it your information. Everybody has a different pitch. Learn how they pitch. Everybody pitches in a different way. And then make, create your own perfect pitch for the client. Have this information from here. And market information, you can't get from a book. We can, I can tell you process information. I can tell you product information. Product information is also, it doesn't have a long life, you know. Product information because products come, go, come, go in the market. You'll see in one month, 10 products coming in from this developer, that developer. After a month, you will not remember any of that. What you will regain is or whatever, whatever you, you're going to retain is the product that you've worked on and the processes you have went through. So for you guys, what I want is more engagement and that more engagement will come from calling with results, not just calling. I've called 500 numbers. What is the result? I don't have any listings. It's impossible. I don't believe it. Yes, Rafia? Do you have some conf confidence today or no? Yes, today you look better. <laughs> that day you didn't. So did you guys, do you guys understand that I want an assertive behavior? I a lousy attitude. Please have that confidence that that uh, attitude in you that you are somebody you have done something you have this information you have the knowledge and of course prepare yourself if you're calling for listings get everything about it every single information that you can think the client can ask you about you should have it written down in front of you no nobody's asking you to cram it cram it keep it in front of you keep it ready make notes create a presentation do whatever you want but you should have that then you will have confidence and if you're pitching a project Get to know everything about that project and the competition and the numbers. Because if you're invest, if you're pitching anything to an investor, like an off-plan project, especially let's say we are pitching D2 right now, it is all about numbers. If you don't know the numbers, if you don't know the comparisons, you can't just pitch that project like that. Nobody's gonna take it from you. 
you have to explain the history of the project, like how it developed from this, this to that, and why the prices, when, what were the prices in the start, in the middle, and now, and now what are we expecting in future and why? And what is the competition around right now and what is going to be later on? So this is what the client is going to be convinced on. Just like logical people, everybody, you know, thinks like that. So what I want is this attitude. I want the lion's attitude. I don't want the, the attitude of somebody who is like, you know, maybe it will happen, maybe it will not act. <laughs> don't do real estate. If you have that attitude, don't do it. Because you're going to sell properties. This is the biggest sale you can ever do in your life. And uh, you are like, I, I would say, have some pride and confidence that you are a handful of people who are selling properties. Nobody, uh, uh, let's say 90% of the population in the world doesn't know how to sell properties. They don't dare. And they don't, you, you know, anyone I can say, I'm not saying uh, people cannot, they can, anyone can, it, there's no rocket science about it. It's not science, it's just information. But what should give you confidence is that Half of the world only buys properties once in their life. This is the dream that they're buying. So you should have that confidence when you're selling somebody the dream home. You know, you're selling some, it's not just a house, it's a lot of emotions and everything else with it. So have the confidence that you are adding value to somebody's life. And that's why you are an advisor. So you should have more confidence, more information, and you should be more prepared to handle this client. Anyways, coming back to the topic is, what I want is this attitude on the call and especially in the meetings as well. But right now, since we are in the very start, these calls have to be made with a lot of confidence. Do not make a call and waste the number if you don't have the information, first of all. And uh, we have the data ready. So whoever wants it, we have some numbers. So whoever wants it, come to me with that building information in and out, anything and everything. I've already, and go back, if you haven't seen the training, go, if you haven't attended, go back, look at the area specialization training, write down everything from there and you should know everything, Hamza, you were asking me. You should know everything about that building. I'm going to ask you anything and then I'm share those, those numbers with you. And then call. And I don't think so you can fail. You can't fail. There is no way. And please, this, these inventories that you're going to get, this is your asset. This is going to generate money for you. And if you get one listing, one listing at market price, that's money right there. And, do you th and by the way, now people are selling, let me tell you, because the market cycle is going to shift very soon. We don't have a lot of time. We already are in a stretched cycle right now. I feel a year, a year and a half. So when you make a call, you tell this to your clients that if you're interested to make premiums, especially on apartments, townhouses and villas is a different category, but apartments in Dubai generally have not seen a lot of appreciation. Most of the time we have seen in cycles a lot of depreciation. As you are in the central location, the prices, it trickles down to all the outer locations, you know, in the suburbs and the, the, the shift in price, it uh, happens quickly uh, in the suburbs. We are doing Arjan, it's one of the suburbs, right? And so they're the first to get affected. The center is the last to get affected. Always remember, they're the first to get affected and they're the la later ones to get recover. When it comes to recovery, the, uh, the shift, when it, then the depreciation starts, it starts from here, it comes to the center. And when it, comes, when it comes to recovery, the recovery comes to the center first and then it spreads out to the other area. This is the rule of thumb in real estate, guys. So explain this to your client and try to get this information that what prices have they bought their properties for and you should be ready with the information that right now the market price is this sir if you will sell and whoever has bought in several years before they are in profit right now and it's a good time for them to sell tell them when the market is good it's good to sell when the market is not good even an old investor will not buy people speculate when the market is slow transaction get down so this is your advantage, use it, this, use this inf information to your advantage. And a lot of people are anyways, they already know this. So they're selling. But when you're initiating a call, this is also your power. Tell this to the client. This, sir, the market might be correcting in a year or two. So if you're interested, we can also look at reselling your property. Or don't start in an atta attacking way or uh, intimidate the client like that. But just give him slow information. At least first get to know what does he want to do. Maybe he just want to sell. If he wants to sell, then good. No need to tell him all of that. 
But if he doesn't want to, because there are a lot of factors involved around in the market, which is driving the force. It's not just the cycle. But overall, if you see, we are going to see a little bit of correction in the next year or so.